Here at Energy Storage Europe, there's a lot of different market segments being supplied by a range of suppliers, but of course the business case is, is different from market segment and also from country to country. Gertz Fischbeck, business developer for Delta EE in Central Europe, has been checking out what a lot of the companies are saying and actually how they're supplying these different market segments. There's a lot of focus on residential and people talk about residential a lot, but of course the commercial and industrial uh, battery storage suppliers also have some interesting uh, use cases for their systems, is that right? Totally, and, and the interesting thing is, of course, right now the market volumes are much bigger for residential batteries, but ultimately their use case will really be optimization of the self-consumption. Yet for the customers to invest in such a system today, they really appreciate the idea of being able to also provide grid services. So right now this idea of being part of a community that is grid friendly and makes sure that you know they interact with the grid in a way to support the grid and not that we have to have additional copper being put into the ground is an attractive feature. Interestingly if you look at the business case ultimately aggregating small residential battery capacities will have a hard time really making a business case. So we will have to wait and see if there really will be companies trying to earn serious money on this because we will see a strong dynamism in the prices, i.e. they will go down even further as more and more capacities of flexibility are being provided. So at that time we see a stronger focus coming to the CNI segment. There obviously the battery is exactly tailored to the load profile of the customer 95% of, of the value is capture, captured on site. You know, peak shaving, load adjustment, many things you can do which really take into account the specifics of local regulation, things in place that you could never tailor to the same extent for a residential customer. And then if you do want to provide ancillary services, you know, those are perhaps 3% or 5% of the value we talk about. So it's kind of the icing on the cake, but it doesn't, it is not the decisive point whether or not the business case actually comes about. And these are bigger storage systems as well, so perhaps can have more utility on the grid for the provision of these ancillary services, is that right? right? So for residential systems, we typically speak about systems having a capacity between 5 and 10 kilowatt hours. That's, you know, your normal residential storage system. When we then look to the CNI space, it's anywhere from 50 kilowatt hours to a megawatt hour with, you know, the sweet spot kind of being around 300, 400 kilowatt hours. And then we have another development which really will impact this market dramatically, and that's when we talk about electromobility. Again, those cars typically have a storage capacity 10 times as big as what your residential system would have, so it's going to be 50 kilowatt hours or above. And interestingly enough, 23 hours per day, cars are actually not moving, but they're standing. So if they're grid connected, and are charged during that time in a smart way, there's a lot of flexibility just being generated through the smart charging. So you don't even require the vehicle to grid kind of feedback loop. Already through the smart charging, you can capture so much value that will make sure that it, having the transition from combustion engines to e-vehicles doesn't mean we suddenly have to put out you know, huge thick copper cables to support this, but by smart charging the car, we can use today's grids and still you know, reach a high penetration of EVs. And if indeed you need very fast charging, then you will go to dedicated high power charging stations, where of course then charging will be more expensive than in your home garage. And we're not quite there yet though in terms of grids being able to be, a, be also an actor on the grid or at least sympathetic to the grid. Is, is that right? Well, today's cars indeed, I mean, they are actually being dump charged, which I think is not very fortunate because I believe it would be so relevant to immediately when we say we go to EVs, this is a very different load. I mean, in a residential context, there hasn't been ever such a single high load than the EV represents. And there would be a great case right from the beginning on to make clear 
we have to tame this, we have to make sure it behaves in a grid friendly way because if we don't do that then we cause troubles, it might actually even slow down acceptance of e-vehicles for instance if you sense this competition between neighbors, kind of the first one getting an EV and having his charging station being built and then the second and third neighbor also investing in an electric vehicle and then the fourth one suddenly getting the reply from his grid operator I'm sorry, but you can't get a charging station because actually already in your neighborhood all the available capacity has been used up. So in order to avoid this happening, we should immediately say you cannot just charge at your own, you know, will, but you will make sure you won't be impacted in your mobility. That will work perfectly as long as you leave it to smart interaction with the grid so that this can always be well balanced and you will always have the range with your car that you require at the time when you start it up in the morning. Indeed and transportation and energy coming closer together which is the kind of sector coupling theme which has been one of the themes here at Energy Storage Europe. Gertz Fischbeck from Smart uh, from Delta EE, thanks so much for your time. I'm Jonathan Gifford, editor-at-large for PV Magazine.